TGIF, everyone. It's the Friday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We're heading into the weekend, and the weather is about to change quite a bit as we go into the weekend. We hit 48 degrees this afternoon, 16 degrees above the average. It was a very nice day despite the uh, clouds. And uh, as I recorded this at 7.35 this evening, here's what the radar looked like. A little bit of Virga, or precipitation not reaching the ground. Uh, across the region now, but certainly legitimate precipitation off to our west. It's raining at a decent clip out towards the western suburbs of Cleveland, Lorraine, down towards Medina, and then down I-71 towards Columbus. We do have rain this evening. This, of course, is heading our way. Here's an hour loop on things. Everything's tracking to the north and east. This is with the first front. The second front comes our way on Sunday. Here's a look at high-resolution future cast showing us what the radar should look like as we go through time. Most of this rain's pushing in mid-evening and then it's here for several hours. By about 1, maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, the steady rain is about out of here. The cold air will start coming in later on. Now some of these radar returns you see on future cast at about 5, 10 a.m. This could be just a little drizzle. Might be a snow flurry mixed in as well. Not looking for a whole lot. Uh, during the uh, late night hours into tomorrow morning, there might be a flurry or a touch of drizzle at just about any point. Well, we're ahead of the front, so it's still mild this evening in the mid-40s here in the 7 o'clock hour, looking pretty good. But here's the cold front out across uh, parts of Indiana, up into Michigan as well. It's kind of right through here, except it's a cold front, uh, not a warm front. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the first front. The second front is just now entering the U.S., there it is, 13 in Bismarck, but up in parts of uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and in Manitoba. It's in the single digits and teens. Below zero, 22 below Key Lake. Ikati, 26 below up there in the Northern Territories. All right, so the Arctic hounds are getting set to uh, howl once again. They're coming south and east, and we're definitely going to be seeing the Arctic air infiltrating the U.S. over the next couple of days. Here's our first front with the showers tonight. Again, tomorrow can start with a flurry in spots. I think the afternoon's pretty benign tomorrow. Temperatures will fall after a morning high a little above freezing. And then Sunday starts out dry. No problems for the morning hours. But as we get into the afternoon and early evening, a little bit concerned about the roads getting slick here. As these snow showers push in and we get past sunset, there could be a heavier squall mixed in here uh, in a few spots Sunday evening. With our Arctic front, uh, these snow showers will be accompanied by cold, icy winds. And then behind the front, we'll drop down, you know, down into the uh, single digits probably late Sunday night, early Monday. And notice the isobars here are packed together. It's going to be windy, very nasty morning outside. The kids, most kids that are probably all, don't have school on Monday for uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So that's a good thing. So we don't have to worry about delays or cancellations or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty harsh Monday morning. All right, as far as the uh, snow goes, uh, this is kind of a two-pronged thing. Sunday afternoon and evening it's just kind of a general snow along the front transitioning into more of a lake effect event for overnight sunday night early monday i think by sunday evening some of us may may pick up an inch you can see our modeling is yeah, kind of honed in around an inch by uh, the end of the day sunday and then the lines keep curving up uh, somewhat sunday night i think uh, especially up closer to the snow belt you can you can get some bonus snow sunday night down to even 224, there might be an additional half an inch or maybe an inch Sunday night. We'll fine-tune this forecast throughout the weekend, but not only will Monday morning be harshly cold, we're going to be waking up to some fresh snow on the ground as well. All right, the wind chills by Saturday morning. Uh, look at the wind chills up in the upper Midwest. And I posted about this on social media earlier on. The, the Great Lakes, of course, are still unfrozen, getting pretty late in the season for uh, you know them to be completely unfrozen. And there's some patchy ice, but none of the lakes are frozen over. And they act as kind of a buffering mechanism, or they sort of, uh, they save us from dealing with the kind of harsh cold that the upper Midwest is going to be dealing with. Notice the wind chills here Sunday morning, 36 below Minneapolis, 41 below in Fargo, but then once this air runs into the Great Lakes, it modifies, and so you'll notice our wind chills will never be that harsh. If the lakes were completely frozen, it'd be a different story, and that's what we were contending with last February. The lakes were pretty much frozen, and so every Arctic air mass that came in had no modifying influence from the Great Lakes. But, uh, of course, this year's a different story. Here's Monday morning. Wind chills. Uh, I think these could even be a little conservative. Uh, notice minus 4 shown here. This is the GFS model, wind chills. I think wind chills could be down to minus 10 in some spots Monday morning. You can see the model is printing out minus 10, minus 14, down towards I-70. Look at those ugly numbers again in the Midwest Monday morning. 
by Tuesday morning, everybody's heading back to work and school, and I think wind chills will probably start below zero once again. Now, is it cold enough for any sort of two-hour delay Tuesday morning? Yeah, it's a tough call. The actual temperature is probably colder Tuesday morning than Monday morning, but it's probably not quite as windy. So it could be a borderline situation for any sort of uh, school two-hour delays Tuesday morning. We'll keep you up to date on that. All right, longer-range trends. I've been talking about this uh, all week, that uh, this is kind of the grand finale of this series of cold waves that started around the first of the year. Notice we slowly climb out of the gutter next week. So by the weekend, uh, we have some promise here that it's going to be a little above average. Now, I don't see a heat wave coming. I don't see December's pattern returning in the next week to 10 days. But some of the longer-range modeling is, is really suggesting that uh, the end of January and into the first week of February... Uh, not all that cold at all. Here's a look at uh, something called the North Atlantic Oscillation, or the NAO. This is uh, several, one of several what we call teleconnections that we look at to uh, kind of uh, get hints as to what is coming down the pike as far as temperature trends. When the NAO is in the negative state, negative phase, that usually connects to cold weather in the eastern half of the country. Uh, you can see the NAO is, is shown to start going positive here as we go into the medium range, and then perhaps even staying positive through the end of January and into early February. And this will g this gives us a big hint that Arctic outbreaks, like we're going to see Sunday into Monday, are going to be pretty infrequent, maybe even completely missing, uh, during the final week to 10 days of January and probably the first week of February. So I think this harsh cold that's coming, this will be the last kind of one of these flavors of air masses that we have for a while. What does the rest of February hold? That's still debatable. There's a lot of debate going on in the in the weather community about uh, the month of February. Uh, you know, initial forecasts, including ours, suggested that February would be the coldest month compared to averages of the winter season. There's some indications now that we may be dealing with the coldest part of the winter right now, and February might not be as cold as thought a few months ago. So there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room for February, but I think the, the month is likely to start out on a mild note. Thanks for watching the Friday Night Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you on TV or your tablet or smartphone tonight on 21 News at 11. Check out Andrew's forecast tomorrow morning on WFMJ Weekend Today, and I'll see you back here for more Weather Geeks Monday evening. Have a good weekend.